Hey guys, it's Jambros, and after a bit of a Rathnax hiatus, I'm back with some new videos for one of my favorite raids, Old War. Uh, it took a little while to get all the information I needed on the changed items from Blizzard to do some new loot guides, but it's finally all here, and today I'll be starting with Assassination Rogue. This should be a very in-depth guide that will give you exact numbers to compare how good or bad the new items are for you in Old War. Uh, these items are simmed twice, once for how much of an upgrade it is for you in full Nax gear, and the second time for how the items stack up when you're in full Old War Abyss. If you're curious what sims and setting I'm used, they're all listed right here. Uh, standard spec, nothing crazy. All buffs covered, 3 minute encounters, as most of these old war fights are going to take way longer than these Naxx ones that we've been doing. Uh, I also didn't sim as a troll and will not for any upcoming loot guides to reduce variance when comparing between classes. Uh, this shouldn't affect how relatively strong individual items are for certain specs, so no worries there. So let's get started with the helm slot, and you'll notice right away that Memoron's Flight Goggles is the strongest individual item here to upgrade into, better than the Tear Helm. Uh, Guys, the Midgard Serpent is more of a side grade type of item unless you're really dying for some expertise rating. Uh, there's actually a fourth helmet here, Corona's Guys, that I didn't forget, it was just worse than the other three. Uh, now in full Old War Abyss, the Tear Piece comes out ahead of the Flight Goggles. Uh, while the goggles are still the best piece on its own, the two-piece set bonus is too good to pass up and the helm is one of the two best slots to put that tier in along with the gloves. Uh, if you do not have the tier helm but do have the goggles, your most optimal slot to move the tier piece into are the legs. The neck has a pretty clear-cut favorite in the Pendulum of Infinity. Uh, pieces with the 252 item level are just really, really strong. Uh, that said, any of these pieces are upgrades from your Nax Piss. Uh, there's a fourth neck, Brooch of the Wailing Knight, that didn't quite make the cut. These three are just better. Uh, even in full Oldowar gear, the other necks are almost 100 DPS behind. Uh, do note that the Nymph Heart charm here is actually BOE, so if you're looking for any upgrade at all, you can just buy this on the auction house. Most of your shoulder options are actually very marginal upgrades. Uh, tier, these Kologarn 25 shoulders, and the Treacherous shoulder pads, which didn't even make the list, are all 20 DPS or less upgrades. A uh, big exception for the shoulder pads is the Intruder, which is a 252 piece uh, from Hard Mode 25 Man Iron Council. Uh, the Kologarn shoulders really are not great. Uh, if you're forced into using a piece that's not the 252 one, uh, a pretty likely scenario considering how de in demand it is and only one drops per Hard Mode if you can even kill it, uh, then you're probably looking at wearing the tier shoulders for a bit. Uh, this is best paired with a tier helmet for the two piece so you can use off pieces elsewhere. Icy Intent and Faceless General are both pretty strong upgrades from Nax gear. Uh, there is the Iron Council Cloak that is also a small 10 DPS upgrade. I didn't forget the Shattered Giant and Winter's Embrace Cloaks, they're just not as good. Uh, these top two cloaks are not easy to get, uh, especially week one. Faceless General does have some staying power, uh, two gem slots and a cloak. Uh, in full best, the 25 man Hodier Hard Mode Cloak is a good bit ahead though. Uh, a 2 minute Hodier is a tough one though, and not easy without quite a bit of buffed Ulduar gear already. Uh, the chest piece is one of the biggest and easiest slots to upgrade in Ulduar. Uh, Thorm, Hard Mode, and 25's drops Embrace of the Gladiator, which is a huge, huge 165 DPS upgrade. That is one of the more accessible Hard Modes, and even if you can't get that, the tier pieces that drop off every Hodier, Hodier kill is still an 80 DPS upgrade. Gladiator is certainly your best option, but if you have to end up using the tier piece for a while, it's best paired with the tier helm. Winner's Icy Embrace is pretty far behind, and is basically tied with the Tunic of the Limber Stalker, which isn't even listed here. Solar Bindings are a huge upgrade for a wrist slot item, but try not to get too excited because they only drop from 25 man Algalon. Uh, the other two, Flexing Energy Coils and Mechanist Bindings, are much more accessible and still a solid 50 DPS upgrade. Uh, the coils from 10 man XT hard mode pull it a little ahead of the mechanist bindings which should be accessible to pretty much everybody considering they drop from normal mode flame leviathan. Both are obviously still behind the solar bindings. Gloves are a pretty interesting slot but mostly because it's the ones with some of the worst options. Uh, best individually upgraded from Nax gear are the gloves of the Amos Dark, a 10 man Algalon item. Uh, gloves of the Blind Stalker and the not listed gloves of the Stone Reaper are not even upgrades. Uh, the tier gloves are upgrades, barely. But also, as you can see here, eventually end up as Abyss when paired with the Tear Helm. Uh, you're really locked into Tear Gloves here. The Endless Dark Gloves are really only useful if you absolutely cannot get your best two-piece Tear combo. I would call any pair of gloves that aren't these two basically useless. Look at this belt. This thing is more than a 200 DPS upgrade in the belt slot. Uh, this thing is insane. Uh, not only that, but it's easily accessible too. It drops off of Yagwan and Ten Man. Uh, the Soul Devouring Cinch is a massive upgrade. Uh, as you can see, it's still huge even in full Old Abyss. 
On the plus side, even if you can't get this belt due to competition or bad luck, you have two other options that are initial upgrades and don't take very much effort. Uh, the second best belt of the Twilight Assassin just takes emblems, and the Deathhorn belt is from a new leatherworking pattern that you can buy. The leg slot has three good upgrade options with the leg guards of Cunning Deception from 25-man Yogg hard mode. Uh, that's the best one. Uh, three gem slots and a 252 item level just really does the trick. Uh, that said, the tier 8 legs and proto hide leggings are easily attainable and still almost a 60 DPS upgrade. Uh, full Old Orbis actually has the tier legs comparatively close, but only if you're able to obtain Mimiron's flight goggles for the helm slot, or slightly worse, the endless star gloves. Uh, there are no massive 252 boots for assassination rogues to use. In fact, there's only 232 options. It's also by far the easiest slot to gear. Uh, the foot pads of Silence is crafted from an old war pattern, and the Flamestalker boots drop from Ignis and 25 man. You can use the Ignis or Iron Council boots for a time if they drop, but ultimately you'll want to get the crafted ones. Uh, they end up being about 25 DPS overall better than the Ignis ones. There are a lot of ring options, and these one listed here are the best five. There are more, notably the ring from Vezax, the metallic ring of the Sufferer, but it's not as good as any of these. Your next best rings are the Surge Needle ring and the Strong Handed ring. Uh, the Strong Handed ring should be the one you replace first, and these numbers are the DPS gain from replacing Strong Handed with these five rings. Uh, some of these are actually pretty close, uh, notably that Loop of the Agile and the uh, Algon 25 Quest ring are within one DPS of each other. Bulbus, however, has that same quest ring, uh, Brand Signet ring, and Band of Lights, which is also from Algalon, but from 10-man and not quest-related. Uh, that combo pulls ahead of Loop of the Agile, but it's still quite close. It's definitely worth picking up if you're able to. Uh, probably the most accessible upgrade here is the Godbane Signet, which drops from Yogg on Normal in 25s. Next, Bis Trinkets are Mirror of Truth and the Darkmoon Card Greatness. Of those two, you'll, the one you want to replace first is the Mirror of Truth. Uh, these DPS numbers are re for replacing the mirror, and as you can see, that shouldn't be terribly difficult finding a replacement. Uh, before you ask, Mjolnir Runestone is behind these five, and it's definitely more of a combat trinket, which I'll get into in another guide. Uh, Pyrite Infuser drops in a 10-man normal Flame Leviathan, and Wrathstone and Blood of the Old God are both 25-man normals as well. All of these are solid numbers, but the really big increases are Comet's Trail and Dark Matter. Uh, of course, they're Algalon trinkets. In Fulbis, here's the trinket chart. Uh, Comet's Trail is still your overall best trinket with Dark Matter in second. Wrathstone actually drops off a bit here. I'd rather use the Pyrite Infuser and Blood of the Old God together, even if that is some ridiculous amount of hit rating. Uh, Wrathstone does have a 20 second on use though, so it may not be modeled perfectly for your raid, and you eliminate some of the luck factor there if you take it. Uh, before I get to the real weapons, here's the range slot. Pretty boring and mostly small upgrades here. They're all fine. Uh, Skyforge Crossbow is the best due to being a 252 item, but you'll have to come into a few of these before you're actually able to get one most likely. Uh, Siren's Cry is pretty easy to acquire, but if you can get the 10-man Flame of Ith in hard mode, then Twirling Blades is better than that and is pretty much made for you. Now, the actual weapons. There are lots of options, but these five are your best overall daggers. Acquiring any of these is an immediate DPS gain from your Naxpiss of Web Death and Sinister Revenge. Which dagger you replace and which hand or poison is dependent on which one drops. Uh, the top two are Blade Twister and Combatant's Boot Blade, uh, both 1.4 speed daggers. These are huge, huge upgrades and drop from Freya 25 hard mode and Thorm 10 hard mode. Your overall abyss are two Blade Twisters since they're not unique. This is an incredibly good dagger and I could probably make a chart forever long with all the different combinations and options for these daggers, but here are some of the big ones. Generally speaking, any setup with a Blade Twister is a win. If you can get it, then do it. Boot Blade is second best. Two Fast Daggers is totally okay and actually very good. Uh, it gets a little murkier with these 1.8 speed daggers. Those are slow daggers and you have to pair it with one Fast Dagger. Bang of Oblivion is actually a 252 item level and still worth acquiring and is what I'd call the third best dagger behind Blade Twister and Boot Blade. That's it. If you have any questions, drop them below in the comments or come by on Twitch, link below in the description to catch me live. If you like this sort of content and want to help support this channel, be sure to like this video and subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you next time.